welcome back to the shop guys I'm Brad today's project is going to be a freshen up of, a, of an old favorite you all know what this is the tried and true spindexer <clears throat> some cost a lot some are very very cheap the one that I got there was was one of those ones that was very cheap um, you could do a lot with them you could freshen them up you could improve them and uh, and get away with you know not paying a lot for a tool so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna freshen the spindexer up make some new parts for it and hopefully improve its performance so let's go take a look what we got we got our dial clamp here which we turned and we threaded and we knurled that locks that in nice here's the other problem I have now this thread right here um, I forgot what it is, but my lathe can't do it. It's slipping me right now. I'll I'll put it up in the video because I'll I'll measure it because um, I'm about to call it call it a night for tonight. But um, yeah, I I can't do this thread on my lathe, and I don't have a die for it. So I did find this bolt here, which fits it too. Fits it perfect. Nice. Uh, my plan, <clears throat> my plan is going to be to uh, I don't know. I was thinking about turning this down to a stub, and then making a knurled piece, pressing it on, and then you know pinning it through. Um, I don't know something. I'm going to figure something out because I don't I don't like this. This is so cheap so 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 cheap I mean look at it even as I go down right at the bottom it still has that much kind of slot let's see this guy this might not be that much better huh it's got a little bit but again this is you know this is a binder that's all it is it's just a binder You know, uh, I'll probably machine machine this off and uh, put some. I don't know, maybe I'll put some of this copper on there. That's not big enough. Maybe I'll put a little brass shoe in here to bind it a little bit better. If I wanted to get real crazy, I could grab the radius of this and and cup the bottom of the shoe and let it just sit in there, and that would really increase its clamping pressure strength you know I don't know it's late I'm tired I'll pick this up again um, well anyway after after we do that then what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna grind these two sides here to make them parallel and then uh, we'll be able to clamp it in the mill and then cut these these uh, sides here and then uh, I don't know maybe we'll surface grind them anyway that's the plan so until tomorrow now I, I have the, the the cast iron body of the spindexer mounted inside the chuck and uh, got a little bit ahead of myself here how I got this flat was I mounted an indicator using this little Noga arm <clears throat> inside a collet um, brought it up, you know, I, I had this configured so it would sit on here, and I ran the table back and forth, um, and basically just trammed it in, uh, okay? What I did was I, you know, I, I brought the spindle down, I used the square just to get it in the ballpark, and then, uh, you know, using, uh, using the little mallet section on here, just, you know, just tapping it to get it perfect, dialed it in, and now what we're going to do is we're going to cut along these edges here so there we form like a parallel surface here so let's get a light on
see how out of square it is. What I'm using to cut this is just a, a four flute, three quarter inch end mill. Uh, it's making a lot of dust, but that's cast iron for you. Measured out the base now and we're looking good on each side. So now what I want to do is I want to drill two holes that will allow this thing to be bolted down using normal, you know, milling machine hardware. Uh, it's a two and a half inch gap. Um, we got the wiggler set up so we're going to find our corners now. we come over uh, an eighth of an inch because this is a quarter inch ball. So 125, not 128. Alright, X is done. Y-axis now. Alright, so the, the width of the piece now is 4 inches, 312. So I need to half that, get the center line, which is 2 inches, 156, and then I need to go an inch and a quarter from each side. So we're going to return this back to zero. And we need to go over uh, two inches, 156. Okay, and that's our center line. I will zero it. And now I actually just go one inch and a quarter either side. And so here's our inch and a quarter. Whoop. There, inch and a quarter. And three tenths for good measure. Cables.
might be able to fit it without moving it. We're drilling half inch holes here. Probably not. I gotta bring this down a little bit. That's fine. Not a bad looking hole. Alrighty, now we're going to unlock our table and do the same thing. Perfect. All right, let's take this out and see what we got so far. All right, here's what we got thus far. Got some nice holes here. We got parallel surfaces. Now, what I've done here, I, and I didn't film it, but I, I took a surface grinder and I just cleaned this edge up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this on a surface grinder and clean this edge up now. Just make it uniform and, I don't know, nicer looking. Not bad. Not bad at all. Get some of these burrs out of here. Alright, you know what I want to do now is I want to take this over to the inspection granite and uh, check it for parallelism. Parallelism. Good old 409. Gets the job done.
All right, let that dry. Help it along with a fresh paper towel. It's funny when you're wiping this granite down and uh, you know, and it's 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 starting to cloud up and, and start to dry. It it feels tacky. It almost feels like the cleaner didn't work. But let me tell you, that feels like satin right there. Amazing. Hear some knocking that tells me I either have a burr uh, well, let's see what the uh, let's see what the indicator says now here's the thing this is obviously it's not a critical um, it isn't a it isn't critical that it's parallel because if you notice inside here this this um, this counter bore right here that's really where the spindle um, you know journals up against and it locks in so technically this thing could be kind of off a little bit but I'm just uh, just trying to see how well my surface grinder did I'm watching Stan's videos all the time and you know he's always checking things on his on his inspection plate and I don't know you know it it makes you want to check your work and make sure everything is cool now this is not the best indicator I'll say that right now this is just a little a little old last word that reads up to tenths I mean up to thousandths and it's uh, it's so so alright so here we are at zero Let's move it around and see what we got. Okay, not too bad. Now, I... Whoop. Yeah, you probably can't see, but it's reading zero. You know, we're zero there. We're zero here, and we're, I don't know, two-tenths off here, like one-tenth off there. That's pretty much on zero. And zero. Now, if I move this around, Yeah, see, when I move it around, it's it's actually moving around on the indicator. See, now we're past zero, so I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call that good. You know, this isn't a... doesn't mean anything, really. But what it does tell us is that, you know, this is... These two edges here um, for clamping in the vise will be nice. Right? So there's our holes. think they came out pretty good we got these trued up now let's take a look what else we got <clears throat> so we made this ring knurled ring what that does is this goes in here you know what I'm gonna clean out this inside of this spindle hole one second. I could just imagine this is filled with grinding dust and milling dust and everything else under the sun.
All right, looking better already. All right, so we have our base basically done. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna change this piece around here. I don't know if I'm gonna make a new ring or just mount this on an arbor and just clean this edge up because there are really, really pronounced grooves in here. They must have ran this thing, um, you know, at a super high feed rate because it feels, you know, it feels real rough. Uh, you know, when I when I run my fingers across it, I get that that feeling of the fingernails on the chalkboard, and it just feels cheap. But I would love to face this and clean it. Um, but you know the bore is fine. The bore is pretty smooth, you know, and it fits it nice. So I don't know if I'm going to make another one or just clean this one up. Hmm. I think I'll just keep it. It's not something that you move every day. Now the thing that's really got me is this piece right here. All this thing really is is just it's soft metal and it just binds the spindle up, locks it in place. So you put your put your pin in, you set your angle, whatever your angle is going to be. Right. And really, all this thing does is it just holds it in place. And it's also a good holder. It pinches the spindle for when you're um, putting your collet in and you're cranking it down. But it's awfully sloppy. I mean, real sloppy. And it's a real oddball thread. So I don't know. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new piece. And what I'll do is I'll drill this out um, a little bit bigger and just tap it to a, a nominal size because the threads I forget exactly what threads these are but I remember when I measured them my lathe can't cut them it's an in-between size so I think that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna turn a new piece we're gonna knurl it it's gonna be a little bit bigger so I have a little bit more you know purchase on it and be able to tighten it a little bit better and uh, and that'll be that so let's set up for that